Welcome to the MB Wildman channel. On today's video, I'm going to show you an excerpt from a DVD series called Focus on Trapping. It was designed here in Canada and it was designed to teach people or show people the proper methods for trapping, how to do it, how to handle the fur, all of those things. Great information for the beginner. Also great for the experienced trapper that wants just a little bit of a refresher or some new ideas for sets or anything like that. If you haven't yet subscribed to the MB Wildman channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We certainly do appreciate the support. And uh, if you like the videos, feel free to comment and I certainly would appreciate any support you got on the channel. So without further ado, here we go. Focus on trapping. Mink are at home on land and in water. This magnificent fur bearer usually chooses to live near streams, lakes or ponds and avoids open areas. Mink enjoy hunting and patrolling the banks of lakes, rivers, and streams. Their dens are located underground in predominantly coniferous forests. The entrance to the den is usually hidden in thick bush. Mink either dig their own dens or usurp those of other animals. They're not fussy tenants, and their only requirement is to be alongside or close to water. Once the trapping season opens, and as soon as you think the furs are fully prime, set your traps. The two weeks before the weather really gets cold are the most productive of the season for mink trapping. Variations in water levels and the first frosts are the most serious problems faced by the trapper. Where to set your traps? A natural hole in the bank of a stream or pond is an ideal site to set the trap. You should always pick the bank where trees, brushes, and grass are most dense. Mink travel in covered areas where grass is abundant, providing cover where they can hide from their predators. The other day, this trapper told me he was sure that a mink was in the neighborhood, since the bait he had put out in the hole he had made had disappeared. He lost no time in preparing all the materials he would need to set a trap. The trapper is refreshing the hole has decided to use a drowning set for this trap. How did I guess? He's measuring the depth of the water with his axe. Before setting this kind of trap, you should always check the depth of the water. It must be deep enough to completely submerge the animal, at least 75 centimeters. The water here is certainly deep enough. Okay, now let's see how the trapper goes about setting the trap. First, a victor number one, or one and a half trap, and a large rock to use as an anchor that he will put in the middle of the stream. He attaches wire securely to the rock. The wire must be long enough to reach the bank. One very important reminder, the successful mink trapper will be careful to keep the area around the traps as natural as possible. Mink are suspicious and distrustful creatures. They will not take any chances if there are too many changes in their usual environment. The key to the submersion set is this little slide lock, which is securely attached to the second or third link of the trap's chain. Slip the anchor wire through the lock, making sure the wire is very smooth so the lock does not jam going down to the anchor. When an animal is caught in the trap and dives into the water, the lock will slide down the wire to the anchor. The Victor Long Spring 1 and 1.5 are used for this set, 
These traps are heavy enough to keep the mink on the bottom of the stream and keep it there. The trapped mink's instinctive reaction will be to head for the bottom of the stream to escape the aggressor. When the animal tries to return to the surface, the lock will prevent it from doing so. In a few moments, the mink will be dead. Always make sure the lock is working properly before you install it. Then fasten the free end of the anchor wire to a stake near the trap, making sure the wire is stretched taut and straight with no kinks. Note that the trigger pan is perfectly level and aligned with the top of the jaws. The trap is placed about three centimeters under the surface of the water at the opening of the hole. After attaching the trap to the wire, remove any obstacles that could interfere with the operation of the trap and lock. Do not use a trap this color. You could not catch any mink, but you may find them doubled over with laughter beside your traps. We've used this color here to show you how to position the trap. When it's its usual color, the trap is practically invisible under the water. It is necessary to use bait if you want to attract mink to this set. The bait can be fish, muskrat, or beaver, but it must be fresh. The trapper rubs it around the trap to release some of the odor into the air and arouse the animal's curiosity. The trapper pushes a stick through the bait and then plants it at the bottom of the hole. If there are otters in your area, they could be attracted by this type of set. In this case, make your sets more solid using a heavier anchor in much deeper water. To prevent a mink from reaching the bait without going through the trap, use an old branch or log to block off part of the entrance. This branch or log will also guide the animal right into the trap. When this method is used correctly, the results can be very rewarding. I use it often with the Conibear 120 in holes like this. The Conibear 120 is especially practical when there's not enough water to use a drowning set and when there is risk of a freeze up. Mink are fond of hiding places like this they're very curious and like to check out natural holes in an old stump or tree trunk or under some large rock near a stream. The trick is to raise the two springs of the trap and put a stick through the coils. He carefully clears out the entrance to the hole and makes sure there are no other openings which a mink could use to steal the bait. He places some fresh fish on the floor well back in the cubby. I also use fresh beaver or muskrat meat for bait. Push one end of the stick into the ground near the opening of the cubby and rest the other end on a forked branch at the same height. The stick must be horizontal with the trap raised slightly above ground level so frost will not interfere with its operation. Spread the wires of the trigger well apart to cover as much space as possible in the trap opening. A mink can make itself very thin and is supple enough to go right through a poorly set trap without springing it. 
If you think it might be able to do this, readjust the trigger wires. But be sure not to make any adjustments after the trap is set and safety hooks removed. You'll be sorry and your fingers won't want to try it again. The trigger must be positioned towards the entrance of the cubby so that the trap will be sprung as soon as the animal touches it. In other words, the trigger must be on the side of the trap closest to you. The trapper has decided to use some more branches to hold the trap firmly in place and make the entrance to the hole smaller. This is a good idea. You should make it impossible for a mink to get around the trap. The branches encourage the animal to enter the hole and go right into the trap. As a finishing touch, we camouflage the trap with dry grass, leaves, and anything else that we find lying about. It's essential to make sure that the trap is hidden and the area looks no different than before. You should not give the animal any reason to be suspicious. The best way to check if a trap is well camouflaged is to take a look from the angle at which the animal will approach it. If you can see the trap, a mink will see it too, so add a little more grass. Before leaving, you should always check that you have not forgotten anything. And make sure, of course, that the trap's chain is carefully fastened to a tree or a good solid log. For even better camouflage, you can slide a bit of hollow dry grass or straw over the wires of the trigger to cover them. Since mink sometimes manage to get through tiny openings not covered by the trigger, it's a good idea to position two small dry branches between the jaws on either side of the trigger. This makes the opening much smaller. A mink will have no choice but to touch the trigger if it wants to reach the bait. The two trapping methods we have just seen use bait to lure mink to a certain place. It's also possible to trap mink with a trail set. That is, to take them by surprise on a path they use all the time. This requires greater knowledge of the habits of mink and the places they frequent. This type of set can be used on the edge of a marsh or stream, at the opening of a culvert or below a beaver dam, where you've discovered clues that indicate the presence of mink. After you've found a passageway likely to be used by mink, clear the trail well enough for the animal to see it clearly. If the mink thinks the way is blocked, it might simply go around the trap. This trap is set the same way as the one we just saw. It's a Conibear 120 trap. Did you notice? We always use a 120 to trap mink. It has two springs and is powerful enough to kill a mink quickly, whereas the 110 has only one spring and cannot do so. To keep the trap in place and guide the mink into it, the trapper inserts a branch or stick through both spring coils and then another one between the jaws of the trap. Never forget to attach the chain securely and remove the safety hooks once you have set the trap. As I mentioned before, the trap must be camouflaged to catch a mink. You must take care to hide the trap well, but do not pile on so much that the action is obstructed. All this might seem overly picky, but it's not all that complicated. The main thing to remember is that the mink must have a clear view through to the other side of the trap, and it must not suspect that its familiar path has changed in its absence. You have to use a little cunning to successfully capture this formidable hunter. I like trapping mink on the trail, but I do not always set my traps on firm ground because mink also like to travel in the water. So I sometimes set a Conibear 120 trap in a narrow part of a stream. Did you see that? Muskrat droppings. Mink is one of the muskrat's main predators, and these two mammals frequent the same places. If you discover signs of muskrat in an area, you can be fairly sure there are also mink around. There is no time to lose. This is an ideal site for a trap. 
A good trapper does not place his traps at random. He pays attention to the clues around him and learns to know and respect the land he traps on. This time, to set the trap, insert two branches through the springs and between the jaws. The sticks stabilize the trap, which lies at the bottom of the stream, and prevent the mink from going to either side. I usually place the trap in a fast-running stream, so that the trap's mechanism is less likely to become frozen into the ice. But there is an inconvenience. The trap blocking the creek creates a dam effect and gathers floating debris. This trapper is very conscientious. He is careful to spread the trigger wires as far apart as possible to cover most of the trap's open area. Remember, a well-set trap is worth 10 traps that have been set more quickly but with less care. The trigger is placed at the bottom of the trap. This prevents damage to the pelt and it ensures that the trap will strike the vital parts of the animal for a quick kill. As with all other methods, the trapper must try to leave the site in a state as natural as possible. If you use too much grass, the animal might go around it or jump over the trap blocking its path. The last two traps we have seen are set almost identically. In both cases, you are trying to trap mink as they make their daily rounds. The first type is placed on firm ground, while the second is set in the water. It is fairly easy to attract mink to a box baited with fish. Those of you who trap marten must know this method. The same box is used. It is made of wood and must be big enough to hold a Conibear 120 trap. You should always attach bait to the inside of the screen to attract mink. But don't put the box in a tree as you do when trapping marten. That's asking a bit too much from your mink. Find a river bank, an old bridge, a culvert, or a dam. The most important rule, the box must blend into its surroundings. An experienced trapper will be able to recognize the best sites for a box set. The timbers of an old collapsed bridge make a perfect site. There are many advantages to using a box to trap mink. The box protects the trap from snowstorms and other rough weather. I leave my mink boxes in the forest all year long and bait them a few weeks before the trapping season begins. My mink become accustomed to seeing the boxes and get into the habit of visiting them for a free and effortless meal. The trapper places a Conibear 120 trap in the opening of the box making it a little less obvious than this, of course. The trigger is positioned close to the outside of the box so that the trap will be sprung as soon as the mink enters. The wires of the trigger are spread apart and bent to cover most of the trap's open area. Do not forget to remove the safety hooks from the springs. Finally, fasten the trap chain securely to a branch or bush and nail the box to the trunk to make sure it stays in position. If you do not have any nails, you can use wire. Never trust chance, telling yourself that the trap will not move. Wind, snow, and animals have already played several tricks on me. 
See how the box blends into the surroundings? Use a little grass and a few branches to camouflage the trap as well as you possibly can. If one of your captured minks gets frozen in ice during cold weather, it's better to take the trap and the animal inside where it's warm and let the ice melt. If the ice is very thin, sprinkle the animal with water before carefully removing it from the trap to avoid damaging the fur. You can also use, like in this case, a screen metal folding box. On the shore of a lake or pond and held steady with small branches inserted in the screen. Note that a fine brass wire is set across the two forks of the trigger. This enables the trap to close quickly once the mink is entering the box. Always ensure that the trap is properly secure. By using the hole made in the top of the box, place a fresh piece of meat. Cover it with a rock and proceed with the camouflage. You should use natural branches or weeds found in the surrounding area, so it will make the box look natural. In this case, we are using a wood box with a pan trigger trap. Note the angle of 45 degrees given to the pan. This ensures a quick closing of the trap when it is triggered. Various models of pan triggers are available on the market. Cover your box, place a rock to stabilize it, and proceed with the camouflage.